<laughs> Hello, Martin. Hello, Ellis. Good stuff. You're looking fit and well. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, You're working out. I am working out every day because it's the <laughs> only thing I have to do. Every well, it really shows. <laughs> um, yeah, well, also, I'm eating a lot more bad stuff. Like, I'm making, I'm baking. So, I'm eating cake, yes, but cake I made. So, there's less bad things in it. Hmm? What are you baking? Um, oh, it always goes wrong. Um, I made some sort of banana um, pecan cake, um, but the whisk broke. <sighs> there was all, literally the whole whisk in my... Um, tried to make bread three times, failed every time. <laughs> the problem is I never cook, but it's the only thing I have to do other than work out. So it's like, I'm going to work out and bake terribly. Um, but anyway, this is about you. What have you been doing in isolation? What have I been doing in isolation? Um, not that much uh, acting, really. Uh, really, <laughs> all the work has dried up. Uh, I've just, I've done some narration for a podcast of a little Chekhov story. That oh, was Chuli. Chekhov, which one? Uh, uh, it was called The Lottery Ticket. It's about it's about a lottery ticket. Done, done. I've sold. So, you wouldn't know it from the title, <laughs> but makes you think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with some, I'm working on a sort of uh, filmed at home thing with some friends at the moment. But everybody in the world is working on a filmed at home thing with some friends too. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is. I mean, extraordinarily, this this is an adaptation of Camus' La Peste. So. Ooh, really, La Peste? I have no idea what that is. Do tell me what that is. It's it's like a, it's like pestilence. It's the plague. Oh, oh, a bit like um, Seventh Seal. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> but it is it's it's a chronicle of a plague, basically, that's all. Okay. But of all the stories I've heard of people doing during isolation, that's the most interesting one. How are we filming it? Yeah. Uh at home. Uh so there are like five of us and everybody's filming different chunks and periodically we get together to read the next bit, talk about our approach to it. And started rough editing the individually chunk, sort of filmed chunks together. So we will see how it goes. Do you have to cry in this one like you do potentially in spoilers? Do you know what I do? <laughs> Every, <laughs> Every goddamn roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was, I actually didn't get um, a stage kiss till I was 23, but I had had so many, he went for the kiss and didn't get it moments before then. <laughs> Every time it's great, another, another time I'm trying to get a kiss and no one kisses me. In fact, in, in, we were doing three sisters at university and I'm like trying to kiss my wife and she's like, pull her away, I'm trying to pull her in. I'm like, oh, well, this just makes me feel all kinds of special. <laughs> It's not all about the snogging, Ellis. <laughs> True, but your ego does take a dent if you're constantly cast as the guy who absolutely they don't want to be kissed. True. It's very true. Yeah. So there's that. That's the acting side. Um, the law centre side has been very busy because everybody needs legal advice. Oh, we also had to get the roof fixed. So I don't know if you see. You can see probably from here. Let you see all the, the scaffolding outside. Yes. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of scaffolding. That's because uh, we we uh, were having some bits of leaky roof fixed just before uh, lockdown, mm. and um, the scaffolding's still been up, but they should be coming to take it soon. I understand. 
how how are you uh, food wise are you having it delivered are you going to the shops once a week like what's happening there shopping shopping once a week mostly so yeah I, the long queue for sainsbury's um and then going around with my trolley once a week staying two meters away from everybody <laughs> scowling at anybody who comes anywhere near me <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my husband does mostly he does the food shop because um Tesco's is far enough away that I can do it, but then I have to carry all of those bags back. Like a week's worth of yeah. food probably. Um and he said he was dealing with this person who just was not obeying the two meter rule. Um and he was like, I have never tisked so loudly. <laughs> and like everyone else. I can't remember whether this was on the WhatsApp chat or not but it's the it's the thing that brings it home to you that time of athens is actually about a man trying to self-isolate <laughs> and, and do social distancing <laughs> it's, it's this complete queue of people who keep coming to bother him he's going go away go away keep the distance uh, james is currently <laughs> it, it is, uh, it's the perfect covid19 play <laughs> Um, actually, I have uh, an idea for a perfect, um, the, uh, no exit is the perfect um, isolation play because it's all about you trapped in one location, just slowly going insane. Yep, yep. Oh, poor thing. Right. I feel very sorry for you. Are you going out for walks or anything? Um, I have a garden, luckily. Um, oh. See if we can. You can't see it, but it's down there where those doors are. Um, so uh, my, it, no, I'm not going for walks. I because I can work out in the house and I can have the garden to sit out there. And I don't know the area enough to know where I would want to go walking. That would be nice. Um, and plus, you don't like running into people. It's not like I'm, I'm, I'm not terrified about like, it's not like and someone approaches, I'm like, ah! Um, but why, why do it when I have nowhere to go? They can sort of like, yeah. if there's that button that says do not press, you have the people who instantly now just want to press it. And then you have people like me, and I was like, no, I don't care. <laughs> I, I am still going out for walks. Um... There were a few weeks where I didn't. I got very sort of despondent, but I've started it up again now. So I'm trying to walk 10,000 steps a day. And I'm not really bothered about whether the places I walk in are beautiful or not. Mainly I'm just going for as deserted as possible, which is quite difficult. But there is strange beauty, even in unpromising places. I mean, I've, I just find this, you, you find some really interesting things to look at. No, I was just thinking that the the one nice thing that's happened so mm. having, is um, in terms of environment. Yeah, there are lots of uh, stories like that, aren't there? The, the you know the canals of Venice have all turned completely clear, and have they? dolphins the Thames, and goodness knows what else. I'd love to see a dolphin. It's on my bucket list. That was a. There aren't dolphins in the Thames. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. So everyone can see how gullible and stupid Alice is. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pleased that you're able to be so productive with um, your law firm and hats off to you for this amazing plague filming you are doing and the narration. You're just putting me to shame. This is this conversation has not done anything for my ego. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing it. Yeah. But but none of none of my drawers are tidy, and you have managed that in a, in a big way. That is true. All my drawers are super tidy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, this will end our recording, so I will press stop uh, now. Fabulous. Do it. Um, oh, one second. No. Ah, there we go. Oh, no.